In this video, I'll go over the upgrades I made to my mid-2010 Mac Pro for gaming and editing. Keep it locked. For the past couple of years, I've been using a 2010 Mac Pro 5.1 as my main workhorse. Its successor was released in 2013, but much as the Volvo 240 outlived its successor, the Volvo 740, the cylindrical Mac Pro faded from production in 2019, unchanged and with few advantages and little to no upgradability, thereby aging into obsolescence faster than its predecessor. At 10 years old, the Mac Pro 5.1 is definitely showing its age, but with the new starting price of a 7.1 tower at $6,000, I decided to see what I could do to lengthen the life of this old gal. I initially bought the machine used, with upgraded dual 3.46 GHz 12-core CPUs, and added a PCIe SSD, OWC PCIe scratch drive, and a Radeon RX 580. This performed respectably until I started working with more intense codecs on my newer cameras, like the 4K on the Canon 1DX Mark II and Mark III, uh, Canon XF705, and the RAW from the Canon C200. I also noticed a drop in gaming performance on many of the games in my Steam library after a routine update around the end of 2019. With the newly supported list of graphics cards on macOS Mojave, it seemed like the right time to upgrade my 5.1. I replaced my boot drive with a 2TB Western Digital Black SN750 NVMe and upgraded the OS from High Sierra to Mojave. The details for this install are on a separate tutorial video linked in the description. I then upgraded to the new Final Cut Pro 10.4.9, which has improved metal compatibility. The GPU was upgraded to a Radeon 7 with 16GB of memory. This required some modification of the power supply to use this card, as the Mac Pro's motherboard does not supply the needed 300 watts of power. In the description, you will find another video detailing the procedure known as the Pixloss mod. As it was with the RX 580, there is no boot screen with the Radeon 7, uh, but something new I've noticed with this card is that when booting up, the HDMI cable must be removed and plugged back in uh, for the monitor to detect the signal. Uh, after restarting or initially booting. Uh, I'm not sure if this is just a peculiarity with my system or if it's normal for these types of upgrades on a 5.1. Feel free to leave a comment if you know. I then swapped my 2TB OWC Excelsior Q scratch disk for a 4TB RAID featuring four 1TB SN750 NVMe drives on a Sonnet M2 4x4 board. All this required was assembling the drives into the enclosure and setting up the RAID and disk utility. I replaced my RAM with 96GB from OWC, arranging in a triple channel configuration for the theoretical speed benefit. On top of this, I have a Sonnet USB 3.0 PCIe card, a 6TB backup drive, and 4 additional hard drives totaling 48TB of storage for video work. Oh, and of course, a Blu-ray optical drive. So how does it perform? Exporting videos in Final Cut hasn't seen any significant improvement, uh, but rendering has definitely sped up with the new configuration, most likely due to the new GPU, which pulls its weight during rendering, reaching its potential on its processor and using about half of its memory. The computer does a great job for video editing, but you will find difficulty in processing many of the newer codecs, such as H.265. In general, H.264, Motion JPEG, and the Canon C200 RAW light footage work flawlessly, uh, but the new 1DX Mark III RAW and the new H.265 footage, uh, such as on the GoPro Hero 8 and the Canon XF705, will require proxies or optimized media to handle. That being said, uh, the 1080p H.265 files from the Canon XF705 are manageable and editable without proxies, but the 4K H.265 is unworkable without a proxy. And of course, creating proxies or optimized media will in turn increase production time and storage space. Additionally, I've still been unable to process the raw footage from my Canon 1DX Mark III within Final Cut Pro itself, uh, but it does seem to work within DaVinci Resolve. Editing a 335 photo time-lapse in LR time-lapse and Lightroom took 22 minutes and 36 seconds start to finish. While exporting the photos from Lightroom and rendering within LR time-lapse, uh, the GPU memory and CPU cores are at the maximum capacity, making the computer very difficult to use for any other tasks during this time. In Geekbench, the computer got a 659 single-core score and a 6,889 multi-core score. It pulled a metal score of 58,109 and an OpenGL score of 48,634. 
In Cinebench, it pulled a CPU score of 1589 CB and an OpenGL score of 63.2 frames per second. In Unigen, it averaged about 75 frames per second on a 1920 by 1200 full screen resolution. And it completed the Bruce X 5K Final Cut Pro render and export test in 13 seconds. As you can tell, the new graphics card is really pulling its weight. The largest bottleneck really comes down to the CPUs themselves. When working with H.265 raw video and especially raw photos for time lapses, the CPUs definitely reach their limits. The NVMe boot drive has a read and write speed of about 1350 and 1450 megabytes per second. The new scratch rate disk has a read and write speed of about 4300 and 4800 megabytes per second. My average frames per second in CSGO seem to hover around 72 on the lowest setting. And Verdun hovers around 84 FPS on the lowest setting. For gaming, the computer is about what you'd expect from a Mac, which is passable, but not amazing. There was a modest improvement that did make the games more playable, but I was expecting to see a, a bit more of a drastic increase. Again, this probably boils down to the older CPU rather than the GPU. Also, my internet speed is quite slow with regular dropouts, which could be attributing to that as well. So as you can tell, the upgraded Mac Pro 5.1 definitely pulls its weight for a 10-year-old machine. Whether it's worth upgrading an old 5.1 versus getting the new iMac Pro or Mac Pro 7.1 will largely depend on your digital ecosystem. For me, it was the more suitable approach, as I am still heavily invested in the older software and older connectivity. Plus, I also like having my library of video work archived on internal drives that don't eject when the computer is put to sleep, as opposed to external drives which eject in that scenario. I don't remember this being an issue on OS 1068. If anyone knows a way to prevent the drives from ejecting in Mojave when in sleep mode, uh, let me know in the comments. But with any luck, this machine will carry me for a few more years before I have to upgrade my hardware. I hope this has helped anyone with a Mac Pro 5.1. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, this is Alexander Calder Spinelli of Longbow Media, signing off. Catch you later, cool cats.